Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Manifesting Lab webinar voted for by the members on the subject of brain science, or at least that's what the members thought they were voting for. But in fact, I've turned a webinar on brain science into two webinars at least, and Part one of the brain science webinar is today, and it's called The Human Animal. Part two will be next month, and it will be on the subject of brain waves. So I didn't want to uh, burden people with a six hour webinar. So I thought it'd be a good idea to split it up and give people a chance to digest anything that is brought up. Now, in many respects, this webinar today is actually in itself the second part of another webinar, because this webinar today, as we go on, you'll see it's pretty much the sequel to the self-sabotage webinar that we had quite some time ago. And this is why it's the sequel. Because this is what you are going to learn in this uh, very convoluted part one of two webinars while being the second part of another. You're going to learn why you might not be in control of yourself as much as you might like to believe. And even how to miss out words from typing terrible terrible i've missed out the word you but anyway why you might not be in control of yourself as much as you might like to believe you'll also learn why some estimate that 95 percent plus of our behaviors happen without conscious thought You'll also find out why you find it so hard to control those behaviors. And on top of that, you'll also find out why you sabotage yourself just when things are finally running smoothly. And I'm sure you've all had that experience. And as a bonus, I'm even going to tell you what you can do about that. There, there is almost no limit to the excitement in this webinar. And to cap it all, it's the question that's been on your mind, I know, all the time. All the time in the lead up to this webinar, there has been one question on your mind. And this is it. And I shall answer it. And the question is, why are coffee houses going to take over the world? And they probably already have. All this and more coming up in this exciting Thriller Minute webinar on the human animal and as is traditional in the manifesting lab webinars we have a bunch of slides whereby you can tell how much pain you have left to endure in the webinar and we go around the slide blocks in this kind of order and within the slides or within the slide blocks we have slides that we go around in this kind of order and so let us launch into this thing. So this webinar is called The Human Animal. And perhaps then we ought to investigate why I have, why, why I have chosen this title and what it has to do with anything in the manifesting lab. Because frankly, there hasn't been a lot of discussion of animals in the manifesting lab up to now. It's mainly been about human beings. And that's mainly because we are human beings. Or at least until this webinar, you may have thought you were. The truth is that there's more going on than you think. And once you understand what's really going on, a lot of those behaviors that I said earlier were self sabotage will start to make absolute sense. But 
in order to understand that, we first of all have to understand one fundamental concept, and that is this one, that brain and mind are not the same thing. It's a common mistake. People think, in fact, they use the words interchange interchangeably. They say brain, they say mind. But when you understand they are quite different concepts, then things that were mysterious to you before will start to make sense. Brain and mind are not the same. Brain is really, if, if we're going to be accurate, a conductor of mind in the same way that a wire is a conductor of electricity. You could say that the brain is a transmitter and receiver of the mind. Now, some people argue over that terminology. They might say, the brain is a container for the mind, but it doesn't matter. The primary concept is that brain and mind are not the same. And when you understand that, things are going to make sense that were mysterious before. Because when you understand the brain and mind are separate, you then understand that mind requires the brain to cooperate in order to express itself into physical reality. And if the brain does not cooperate, then the funny thing is the mind is almost helpless to express itself in physical reality. So in the manifesting lab up to now, we, we've talked almost endlessly about the mind all the methods, all the techniques, they're kind of mind focused, but we haven't really discussed the brain. And that's why there are two webinars, at least on the subject of the brain. And let's make this concept really clear. If you're still not entirely clear on what I mean by brain and mind, let me come again to the concept of the human triangle that I've spoken about many times, absolutely essential in my view to becoming a real human being. And by real, I mean, obviously, a human being that has reached their potential. Because a human being really consists of two aspects, a spiritual aspect and a physical aspect. And you can think of these aspects as being two parts of a triangle. Unless you have the physical and the spiritual both balanced out, you're not reaching your potential as a human. And I've said in previous webinars that people do not give enough credence to the physical. And in this webinar, I'm going to continue to say that. Because really, when we think of spiritual, this is where we can put the label of mind. And when we think of physical, this is where we can put the label of brain. So as I said on the previous slide, the mind and the brain really have to cooperate in order for you to be a human being to your maximum potential. But I also said on the previous slide that there is actually something a bit different than just an equal cooperation. If mind cannot express through the brain, then whatever the mind wants the brain to do, the brain will do something else. And strange things will appear to happen with your behavior as a result. In some respects, you can think of the brain as being almost a separate entity in itself. You can think of the mind as being the, the runner of the, the spiritual person, you could say. 
And you can think the brain as being the coordinator of, let's call it, the human animal. Because in many respects, this brain is an animalistic type thing. It has animal instincts. It behaves in ways that you see animals behaving like. And without the spiritual aspect to coordinate, to coordinate and sort of guide it, it will behave in a very animalistic way. So this is the concept then. Hopefully that's clearer then. The mind and the brain are separate. And you've got to get both working together to really express yourself as a human being to your full potential. Now, there is another aspect of the brain that needs to be thought about. Because not only is it the thing that takes care of the human animal side of you, it has another interesting property. And that is that it doesn't stand still. So I said earlier that brain and mind are a bit like electricity flowing through a wire, where the mind would be like electricity and the brain would be like the wire that it flows through. But it's not quite like that, because it's a wire that keeps changing. Let me introduce you to a character here. Now, does anyone recognize uh, this handsome brute on the screen here? No? Yeah, you're lacking then a bit in your ancient Greek philosopher category of education. Because we all know it's Heraclitus. Yes, of course, you knew that. Heraclitus, that famous Greek philosopher who said, that basically the only constant thing in life is change. Clever guy. But he also said something else. He said this. He said, no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river. And he's not the same man. So a few points can be made from this. Firstly, there were no women in Heraclitus's time, or at least none that stood in rivers. And secondly, he made a very clever observation. Now, I have hinted at this concept before. I think in hot seat webinars, uh, I don't think I've spoken about it in member webinars. But from moment to moment, you are not the same person. And I don't mean that in a metaphorical sense. I mean that literally. You are not the same person because from moment to moment, your brain is changing. Your brain is constantly rewiring itself. Constantly. Now, there isn't enough time in this webinar to go into the details of how that happens. We will talk about that in the Brainwaves webinar next. But, but the basic concept is that Whenever you start repeatedly doing anything, your brain physically changes. It rewires itself. Now, as it rewires itself, this process generally takes... Uh, people argue over it, but let, let's say for sake of argument, let's say it takes about 30 days for the brain, brain to completely rewire itself 
so that a particular behavior becomes easier to do that you were doing. And that is what we refer to as a habit. So there is this interesting property of the brain that anything, anything that you do repeatedly, the brain will rewire itself to make that thing eventually easier to do. And that's what we call a habit. But the brain does not judge as to whether the thing it's rewiring itself to be able to do more easily is beneficial to you or not. Now, when that rewiring is not beneficial and we end up having an easier behavior pattern from that rewiring, that's what we tend to call, among other terms, an addiction. Or we could also label it as self-sabotage. That's when the brain rewires itself to become something that doesn't actually go along with the wishes of the mind, and in fact can be quite destructive to the body. So this rewiring process is really quite interesting because what it's telling us is that really the brain has the final say. Because if we, if we rewire our brains towards something that is not helpful to the body, and then we try to stop the, the brain from implementing that behavior, we struggle to stop it. It's going to do whatever it's decided to rewire itself to do. We feel powerless when the brain decides to do that. Now, admittedly, we are the ones probably responsible for the rewiring most of the time, but there are times when we are not. And those times when we are not, we feel completely out of control and we cannot understand what's going on with our lives. That is the true self-sabotage. And that's what we're going to talk about now. And this self-sabotage, it comes about because of this interesting property that the body of which the brain is a part has. In physical reality, your body is more powerful than your mind. So your brain will override your mind. And that is done on purpose. This human body has been designed that way to override the mind. Your body doesn't trust you. Now, how do I, how can I possibly say that? Well, look at the things that your body does which you cannot stop it doing. Things like eating, drinking, heartbeat, digestion, blood circulation, sexual desire. You can fight those things, but sooner or later you're going to lose that fight. Your body basically takes out of your control anything it thinks is important to it. And that's actually a good thing. Because imagine yourself browsing away on Facebook or whatever you do in your spare time, and your body realizes that it's running out of energy and it needs some food. Well, if that decision was left up to you and you're browsing away there, 
going down the feed, looking at all the pretty pictures of cats and things like that, you would forget to eat. So your body takes over, sends you these really powerful hunger impulses, and it forces you to go and get some food. That's not you. That's not the mind. That's not the conscious you. That's the body taking over. Because if the body left it up to you, it would be in trouble. If Imagine if your heart beat, you had to think about making sure your heart carried on beating or your lungs carried on breathing. That would be the end of the human race, especially these days with smartphones. Those things are not trusted to you. They're not trusted to your mind. It's taken, that control is taken away from you. Unless you are some yogi, some yogi master who can, who spent years and years and years attempting to gain control of the physical side. And even then there are limits. Unless you are that kind of being, you're going to have to go along with whatever your body thinks is important if it thinks that you are threatening it. So if you are not eating when your body thinks you should eat, it doesn't matter what you do. You are eventually going to eat. It's going to force you. So really what I'm talking about is the fact that there is a a mind-body war that's actually going on. Remember, the brain is a part of the body. It's the physical aspect of the body. The mind is the non-physical. So the body will allow the mind to do what it wants until the mind interferes with something that the body is, thinks is more important. When you understand this, then it starts to make sense why you can have all these plans, all these things you want to achieve, and for some reason, when you want to do them, you find other things to do. You seem to be sabotaging yourself. And it's not that the body or the brain is trying to sabotage what the mind wants to do. It's that the body and the brain think there's something more important that needs to be done first. And until you come to terms with what the body and the brain want to do and understand why they want to do it, you're going to be at the mercy of it because you're going to think it's just some random thing that's appeared out of nowhere. But what I'm going to show you in this webinar is it's not random. And if you keep the body and the brain happy, they will get out of the way and let you do what you want to do. But if you ignore them, they will take back control and you will feel out of control and you will not understand why your life seems to be go going to bits for no particular reason. There is a reason. It's just that you haven't understood what the body wants. And so it really would be helpful to us to understand what it is the body wants. So let's find out.